Hi there. Welcome back for part three of our video series on programming the EDUN cartridge for the Commodore 128. So in this final part, we'll be using the Lua scripting language to recreate our simple Hello World program. And as a Lua script, it will run on the ARM processor, which is inside the EDUN cartridge. Uh, this is where all Lua programs run. So just as a brief reminder of what the program does, we'll rerun the assembly language version here by just typing hello on the command line. And you'll see it's printing random colored text on random rows on the screen. And it does this for 200, 200 iterations. So to create our Lua program, we'll again use the Joe editor. So we just do Joe hello.lua to create a new file. And so we're going to have 200 iterations, so we're going to need a counter. So we'll define local variable count as equal to 200. And then we'll do a while count is greater than zero. Do. And that's going to be our main loop. And then within this loop, we need to generate our random numbers. So let's have a local y is going to equal math.random25. So in Lua, that will give you a random number between 1 and 25. And let's also have a local CLR for color. And that'll be math.random15. So in, in Lua, most numeric values like array indexes and, and random numbers, they're, they're one based instead of zero based. So we don't have to do the extra steps of like adding one to the, the color value like we did for C, or C in assembly language. Um, these values will be just as we need them to be. Uh, so once we have our random numbers, let's, uh, let's call a function we're going to create. So we can call that output to output our text. And just like we did in C, we're going to pass it a x, y, color, and a string. So let's do that as a y times 2 for the x value, and then y, CLR for color, and then our string. So hello world. And again, in Lua, things are quite convenient here. We don't have to worry about like ASCII to Petsky conversion. That's all taken care of within the Eden cartridge. So even though we're writing our script in and saving it as ASCII format text, um, this hello world string will show up as intended as the Petsky string. And then finally, we just need to decrement our counter. So count equal count minus one. And as simple as that, we basically have the, the gist of our, our Lua program. But of course, we need to create this output function. So let's define local function output. And that's going to take an X and a Y and a color and a string. And so what do we need to do in this function? Well, we're going to have to position the cursor um, when you're using the print function, which we're going to use here in a minute with Lua. Um, it's going to output text to the specific location on the string where the cur or, or on the screen where the cursor is currently located. So we'll have to set that position first. So we'll define another function, call it cursor position, and we're just going to pass out the x and y location. And then we're going to need to set the appropriate color. So let's have a set color function, and we'll pass out our color value. And then once we've done those two things, then we can just print our string. So we use the built-in function print to print the string. So that defines our output function. Um, but in the course of doing so, we've, we've created the need for two new functions, cursor position and set color. Um, so let's deal with uh, cursor position first. So we'll have another function. The cursor position takes an x and y value. And what that's going to need to do is, is position the cursor using ANSI escape sequences. So Lua programs running on the EDUN cartridge that want to use the print function also have the ability to use ANSI escape sequences to do things like set the style or color of the text or set the cursor position. Um, so you need to know a little bit about 
ANSI escape strings because we don't have any. Well, you could have a, you could use an API that provides kind of you know built-in functions for this sort of escaping. It could provide, for example, a, a cursor positioning function. Um, but we're not going to use any external APIs. We're just going to create everything here from scratch. Um, so we're definitely going to want to print something, and we're definitely going to want to format what we're printing. So we'll call print with the string format internal. And what's our string going to look like? Well, an ANSI escape code starts with the escape value. So it's a, a decimal 27 or a hex 1B. So the way we, we write that in a Lua string is we just do backslash 27. So that's, that's an escape. And then for positioning the cursor, we're going to have a open square bracket. And then we're going to have our, our row and our column values. So since we're using the string format function, we can encode a decimal value like for the row as a percent %d. It's very similar to like printf and, and c if you're familiar with that. And then we're going to have a second value for the column. And then we're going to have an h. So basically, that's the format of a cursor positioning ANSI escape sequence. And so then the parameters for this are going to be y, the row value, <clears throat> and x, the column value, in that order, because that's the order it expects it. <clears throat> and close parentheses, and that will be the, the entirety of the function for positioning the cursor. Uh, so next we need our set color function. So very similar, we're going to use ANSI escape codes. So we'll do local function set color and with a parameter C. <clears throat> and so this time we need to build up our escape sequence, which is going to include the color value itself, but it's offset by 30. So our color value coming in, like we said, is going to be uh, 1 to 15. Um, well, we need to offset by that by 30. So we're going to do a local, uh, we'll call this TC for text color. And we'll just take our color parameter and add 30 to it. And now we need to differentiate between dark color and light color. So it's an anti-escape sequence to say whether you want to use the, the eight shades of darker color of the available colors or you want to use the eight shades of brighter color and you do that by passing either a 0m escape code or a 1m escape code. So in the case that c is less than 8 that's going to be our darker colors. So if c is less than 8 then we're going to print uh, again we start with backslash 27 for the escape and then uh, open square bracket and then if we just do M, so that's the M command with a parameter of zero, which means give me the dark shades. Um, else, we're going to print a very similar string. So 27 open brackets, but this time 1M. So that's telling, telling it that we want the brighter shades of the colors. And we're also going to need to scale our text color value down so it's it's in the appropriate range, right? So um, in this case, we'll just take our originally defined TC value and subtract 8 from it. So TC equal TC minus 8. And then we'll end our if statement. So that should give us our different shades of color um, encoded as ANSI escape strings. And then the only other thing we need in this program is before we <clears throat> exit this or finish the script and exit, we should set the color back to something reasonable. So we'll do a set color seven, um, so we don't end up with some weird cursor color when we drop back into the um, Eden shell. So let's uh, save our program, and we'll do that with Control K X. And it says hello.lua saved. And if we type directory, we'll see that it's a grand total of 481 bytes. So just a little bit bigger than the C version of the program. But in the C version of the program, we used like an external API designed for the C128 VDC. We had, we had APIs like print string VDC. 
Um, in this version, it's all just straight Lua um, with the benefit that the, the print command on the Edun cartridge, the print Lua command, actually knows how to print on the Commodore 128 screen. So that's the only thing that's sort of external, but it's really, it's a built-in, it's a built-in function of Lua, um, just modified to work on the Commodore 128. So what happens when we run our program? Well, we run it very simply. We just use the Lua command and the name of our program. So Lua, hello.lua. And we got all white. That's not quite what we wanted. What's going on there? Uh, so let's go back and take a look at our program here. So we're definitely calling output and passing a random color value. And our output function definitely calls set color with that color value. And set color exists. Oh, but we never actually did the set color portion. So we, we selected bright text or dark text, which is why we saw bright white and darker white. Uh, but we never actually did this part. So we're going to have another print string format. And this is where we use that TC value that we defined. So again, backslash 27 and open brackets. And this time it's percent DM. So it's that value that we've scaled to be 30 something um, passed again with as the parameter to the M command. So that's telling it what, what color specifically that we want. And then that's going to use TC as its parameter. And that should, that should fix it. So we'll save our program again. And we'll run Lua, hello.lua. And there we go. Now it looks like the version from assembly language in C. And you can see it, you know, it runs pretty fast. Um, it's not instantaneous or anything because you do have the I.O. of transferring the, the string over and over again from the cartridge into the Commodore 128's memory. And of course, of course, the Commodore 128 is translating these ANSI escape codes to draw things as we described that we want them to be drawn. Um, but it's very quick to write the program. Uh, the, the scripting language is very simple in my opinion. It's very akin to like basic from the 1980s in that it's easy to learn, has a simple readable syntax. Um, and, and that's why Lua is part of the Eden cartridge because it provides us this nice alternative that's kind of reminiscent of um, programming in basic in the 80s. But the benefit is whatever code you write in Lua is going to run on a one gigahertz ARM processor. So if you want to do some fancy computations within your Lua script, um, you can certainly do that. And you can pass a lot of data back and forth between the Commodore 128 and your Lua program. And you can write hybrid programs where there's a, if, a client application, if you will, running on the Commodore 128 that's implemented in assembly language. And corresponding to that, there's a, a Lua, call it a server application. Um, that runs on the ARM processor and does things like computations or other, you know, program logic that can all be implemented in Lua. So that's the idea. I hope you find it interesting. I hope this uh, simple example is helpful. Uh, if you want to learn more, certainly take a look at the, the GitHub page. There's a Lua ref uh, reference document that describes the different ways to create Lua programs with the Eden cartridge. And please comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.